are currently focusing on the draft voluntary assisted dying bill about to be debated in New South Wales Parliament. And while it affects all Australians, this time those living in New South Wales, it is, of course, an issue of particular concern to older people, in particular older women, who, as we all know, have many different roles in life, often including caring for a terminally ill loved one. Today we're being joined by Chair and Public Officer for the Older Women's Network, also known as OWN New South Wales, Beverly Baker, whose organisation has been gaining increasing national reach with advocacy across areas including homelessness, violence and abuse and discrimination against older women. And Beverly, thank you very much for your time joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Beverly, before we dive into the issue of voluntary assisted dying, could you give us a brief overview of what the Older Women's Network is and what it does? Look, the Older Women's Network was established in around 1985 as an offshoot from the Pensioner and Superannuates Association when we realised that the issues facing women were not being met or weren't even being recognised. Um, the whole idea was to support women, to offer a network so that women could meet they could share, they could join together and they could have, have friendships. So it was a, a complete package of things for older women. And out of that came the, the state association. But then look, as you do in any voluntary organisation, is that if you have something coming up somewhere, that's interesting. If it appears twice that's a concern, but if three people express the same difficulty, you know you've got a problem. And that's how the Older Women's Network at a state level has worked. At a local level, it's very much focused on the women in that area and what they want to do, what their interests are, and how they can offer that network of support and friendship uh, across their regions and districts. So we've got 17 uh, different groups across New South Wales, uh, including wellness centres, and they do anything from movie nights through to uh, political discussions. So it's everything in the mix. I imagine that's all got quite difficult with COVID. How's that going? Well, it's really, it's really interesting because we've been running courses for women uh, for a long time. And with COVID, we had to, I think the word is pivot, and go into online courses. And what we've discovered is, is A, older women are not as techly, technically illiterate as we thought, but that our reach has expanded because people who were not able to get into the meetings have been able to log on from their home and, and take part. People who were not able to or weren't, I mean, the classic case is a, a case of a, a lady who contacted us and she was very much involved in the creative writing course. And she um, she contacted and we said, oh, you know, we can't wait to meet you because we hadn't met her. And she said, no, I won't be coming into the office. I won't be coming in. And we said, why not? And she said, because I'm living in my car. I don't have oh, access to clean clothes and showers. She said, but by being able to join online, I can be part of a group and feel like I belong. And we said, look, you belong. Come in, you can have a shower. We'll we'll do whatever we need, you need it's done. Mm. She was in that cohort, which is a growing number of people who are a proud, hardworking on themselves, being cast aside by our society, which is really quite sad. It is indeed. It's outrageous. Now, just in relation to the Voluntary Assisted Dying Bill, Parliament scheduled to return from the COVID shutdown, I think, on October 12th, notwithstanding yeah. Gladys has just resigned. How's that? <laughs> That's unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't even know where to go with that one. Now, well, IPAC certainly has a list of scalps on its belt. Um, there's been a number of um, from this government that have uh, been had had to resign over issues of, uh, involving... ICAC. Now, in relation to the Voluntary Assisted Dying Bill, New South Wales Parliament is scheduled to return from COVID shutdown on, at this stage, October 12, further COVID issues notwithstanding. And we heard from Shane Higson at Dying with Dignity in New South Wales yesterday that independent MP Alex Greenwich is intending to introduce the bill as soon as the 14th of October during private members' bill time. There's been extensive consultations on this. Can you talk us through what Owen has been doing in relation to Alex's bill and what input the Older Women's Network has been able to have during the consultation process? 
we joined the uh, working group to look at this uh, bill, mainly from the perspective is that if we we needed to inform our members what was in it, what was going on. So we didn't come out in support of the bill until today. And we can do that today because yesterday we had our AGM and our AGM unanimously supported the uh, introduction of the bill and the passing of the bill so that the Older Women's Network, through its members, have said yes to this bill. So we can now actively promote and uh, get involved in it. Our role well, on the committee was really trying to make sure that the voice of older women might have been heard and that anything that came up that was of value or of concern, we could inform our members and then find out how they felt about those issues. Okay. You recently had an online seminar in relation yes. to the voluntary disability. Yeah. Your panel included Andrew Denton from Go General Australia. Is that correct? That's right, yes. What were the main things that came out of that online seminar? What were the concerns and things that were still being raised around it? Look, um, Carolyn Bohm, who was our ambassador, uh, hosted that, that seminar and she teased out the issues using the reports and the statements that are made from groups who oppose the assisted dying bill and Andrew was able to deal with each of those and to put them back into some kind of context. And it made it very obvious that there's a lot of cherry picking. As we see in all opposition, lots of cherry picking of the facts and of what's actually going on. We discovered that hope uh, is actually an offshoot of the Catholic Church and who has been using that to, dis for, to spread disinformation around the bill and what it might mean. Um, we knew that none of the things that they were saying was in the bill but still it was getting to people. And even yesterday at our board, at our AGM, one of our members was very concerned that doctors would be able to make it up their own minds and terminate the patient without anyone's knowing. So yeah. it was really it was really great that we could actually say, no, the bill is very clear that at the moment there is no assistance from the doctor other than the prescription and the assessment. So to make sure that that it is a terminal illness, that the person is in pain, that they are compass to make the decisions, all of the things that you would expect around a bill like that and nothing there that says a doctor can then administer it. Unless you can take the potion yourself, then it's not on. Okay. There's a number of advocacy groups pushing for VAD in New South Wales, such as Go Gentle and Dying with Dignity. Has it been your experience that they work together quite effectively in the background? You all talk to each other, yeah? Absolutely. All talk to each other, all work together all, and work cooperatively together. And I think that's the only way that legislation like this is ever going to get through. And we saw that last year or the year before, I can't remember now because of COVID, with the, uh, the decriminalisation of the abortion legislation. We nah. had everybody on side with that. And that's the model that... Um, that voluntary assisted dying is using is to get as many voices and as many people on side to see to make sure that it covers all of the bases and people are very very satisfied and happy with with what actually is endorsed and goes to parliament um, it's it's really important issue as part of a health issue it's not uh, a criminal issue it's a health issue if you have a doctor who has been looking after you all of your life or, or for a long part of your life and you get to the end this is a matter of health issue. If you are in absolute pain, if you are disappearing quickly from who you are and are burning, and, and you are conscious of that, the option to be able to discuss with your doctor and have them be able to answer you honestly is a really important part of this act and the ability because at the moment a doctor can't have that conversation with you. Now, both Alex Greenwich, the independent Sydney MP who's tabling this bill, and Shane Higson have seemed cautiously optimistic, although not taking anything for granted about the bill's chances this time. Although, judging from some of the mail outs that are going out, for example, in the, my own electorate here in Cootamundra, Steph Cook has put out a significant mail out giving people both online and hard copy options to vote yes, no, tell us what you think, can we send you a copy of the bill? Clearly, there's a lot of discussion and discourse going on in the background about it. So, I'm guessing it's still quite contentious an issue, but 
that seems to be more and more confined to conservative and vested interest party room, from what I can tell. What, what's your level of optimism around it, given the discussions you've been involved in? I know we only missed out by one vote last time and mm. it never went to both houses. Do you feel that we are way ahead of where we were then? Well, provided the parliamentarians are allowed a conscience vote, and I know that uh, the Premier had said previously that after the um, uh, criminalise, decriminalisation of abortion, she would not be allowing a conscience vote again. We hope that, she, that whoever now takes over that role will change their mind and allow a conscience vote on this because we know that 80% of the Australian population actually support it. So that should mean that 80% of the parliamentarians support it and we would ask them to reflect the views of their electorate and vote accordingly to the wishes of their electorate. This is what a parliamentary democracy is supposed to be about, not party politics, but actually reflecting the views of your electorate. <clears throat> Look, given it's been operating so effectively and safely too in other states for some years without the dystopian outcomes that had been predicted by various people opposing the bill, what's left of that argument against it? I was asking Shane Hickson about this yesterday and, and she says some of the even discounted concerns are still being used to argue against it. How do you counter something like that in the world of fake news and Trump voters? Look, you just tear your hair out because people are locked into a view and we are in a post-truth era. People aren't interested in the facts. They're interested in their opinion. And that's really quite sad because it's not mandatory. We're not forcing everybody to be terminated once they get sick, ill, or even are faced with an immediate death. It is a matter of choice. It's a matter of discussion with your family, with your, your physicians, with your specialists, your oncologists, all of your care management people. It's a conversation that you ought to be able to have the right to have and to be able to sit with your family and, uh, and say to them, this is what I'm facing and I really don't want to go that way and allow them to be able to help you. My daughter is a pharmacist. I can't even raise this with her because if she answers the question, she can be struck off. You know, mm. that's not fair. She, you know, I love her. She loves me. I don't want to see her in pain. She doesn't want to see me in pain. I have no idea what tomorrow is going to hold for me, but I do want to have the choice is if I am facing an absolute agony, debilitating, burdensome end, I would like to be able to say goodbye to everybody who matters to me, to everybody I matter to, and then quietly, surrounded by the people that I love, choose my own departure day. The other factor is it's interesting to note, I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but the vast majority of people that do go through the a huge amount of checks and balances and hoops in order to obtain permission for voluntary assisted dying. And in many cases, they don't use it. They just find it a huge relief to know that they have that control over the end of their life. And as has also been pointed out by advocates for voluntary assisted dying, it doesn't result in one extra death. It's simply allowing people a compassionate end for a death that's inevitable anyway. Absolutely. And one of the reasons that the New South Wales legislation is actually a 12-month limit or a 12-month time frame is that we have evidence from other states that by the time people go through all the hoops and, and checks and balances, it's too late and they've yeah. already died or they've taken matters into their own hands and have done something like go out into a freezing cold night and not be found for four or five days later, which is devastating for the people that you love. One thing Shane Higson pointed out yesterday was how much first responders, including the police and ambulance services at command level, are for voluntary assisted dying to be properly legislated with, of course, all the relevant safeguards in place because they're pretty much tired of cleaning up the mess from people having to do do it yourself. So he's hoping that the New South Wales Minute. Parliament will give us our democratically expressed will this time, apart yeah. from contacting your MP and availing yourself of the considerable number of um, click boxes and writing things people are providing on websites. What else, Beverly, can people do to help get this across the line, given that we're now looking a couple of weeks max before it first gets raised in Parliament, notwithstanding this morning's leadership bill? Yeah. Look... 
sadly, the only things that parliamentarians listen to is their electorate, and the electorate has the power. So if you live in an electorate, any electorate across the state, ring your local member, email your local member, and say, this is important to me, support it, and demand a, a, a conscience vote on this. You must support this at this important to the quality of life of people who are at the end of their life. Beverly Baker, thanks so much for joining us today. It's a very important issue. And thanks too to AIN as an organisation for supporting the rights of older women who could, in this government era in particular, could be forgiven for thinking they've been kicked to the curb by their own government every chance they get. It's mm -hmm. great that an organisation like Older Women's Network provides that extra support. So thank you very much for joining us today. It is indeed my pleasure. Thank you very much for the invitation. That was Beverly Baker, Chair of OWN New South Wales, highlighting the importance of voluntary assisted dying bill in New South Wales, not just for older women, but indeed for all of us. We're all going to die at some stage and, of course, we would all like the most compassionate end, surrounded by family and friends.